everyone. Um, thank you for joining, and uh, it's good to have um, you joining the meeting, not just the team members, but um, observers um, joining the call. So welcome. Um, and uh, let's start. So I'll um, start from the agenda review. So um, we have um, four agenda for discussion. Uh, in addition to the regular agenda. Uh, so one is the update from the last ICAM meeting in Dublin. Um, agenda item four is the status update on implementation. Do you want to confirm the current status for the components um, that needs implementation, which is SLA, review committee, IPR? And then we also want to do a brief recap on the overall timelines. And then lastly, um, there will be two sessions about the INS stewardship transition at the IGF um, that's happening in, uh, next week in Joao uh, Pessoa. So um, I'd like to give you some uh, heads up that this is happening. And I'll be um, speaking in both of the sessions and see if there's uh, key messages that um, you see is needed to be added during the session. Is there anything else that you'd like to um, add to the agenda today? If not, uh, let's go straight uh, first to cover the action items. So um, I'd like to confirm how far we have gotten uh, with the notes from the previous call. Um, would either Herman or um, somebody from the NRO Secretariat be able to um, give us an update? So my name is Herman. Uh, notes from the last last meeting have been uploaded to the um, uh, NRO website. Um, I'm still missing one meeting from um, last or, or June, which was during the I can meet in Buenos Aires. Uh, just um, need to find the, my, my notes, but still, if it's not, I will produce the notes this, this week from from the recording. Thank you very much, Herman. So, um, if there's um, anything I can do for um, the ICANN meeting notes from Buenos Aires, uh, please let me know. And uh, it's good to have all the notes ready, um, including the notes from the last meeting. So thank you very much for um, keeping us um, um, keeping this maintained. So um, let's go for the update from ICANN 54. So I think I've pretty much given the key points about um, the last meeting in Dublin. And so the our focus of our attention was pretty much on the timeline, um, especially how the CCWG is progressing. And um, as we actually discussed at the um, team call before the Dublin meeting, it was a bit concerning how the progress was within the CCWG before the meeting happened. But um, I think at the end, um, CCWG did come up with um, the timelines that the NTIA considers that they can still um, review the proposal in time to make it to the necessary review within the Congress. And I see, I saw some progress in most of the key issues um, that were controversial before the Dublin meeting, which saw direction in, in a way forward. Um, so. We still need to keep an eye on how the group progresses, but I think we did what we can during the meeting in expressing that we can, you know, it's not, there are some communities outside um, the ICANN community that is waiting for um, the proposal to be ready. And so I think our message has been heard by not just the chairs, but then to the wider. Um, um, members of the CCWG as well. So I'll stop here regarding the progress um, in Dublin around the CCWG. But um, uh, let's see if there's anything else that um, the Christine members who are in Dublin 
wants to add uh, on this particular point um, on the timeline and progress in Dublin. Morning. Thank you and hello everyone. I hope you can hear me. I had some audio problems connecting. Uh, I just wanted to um, add two points to, to, to your update, Izumi. Uh, one was that, um, for those of you who weren't there, the um, three operational communities made a, a joint statement in the uh, public forum. Uh, which was uh, simply about us committing to to continue to work together and to um, to find a, a a solution for the IPR issues that suit all three communities, and also to work together on the implementation. Um, and I don't know if you've had any reactions to it, but I've had uh, some very positive reactions to to that statement for various people. Um, and then the, la the, the second point, I thought we should at least um, bring it up since, since it happened at the at the meeting was this discussion about um, uh, our dependency on the CCWG and, and the, the the increased uh, pressure from our community to move forward. Um, and I personally, I just wanted to say that I thought it was. Um, we had some very good discussions uh, um, on site about it, and I think you know it's always good to to get these informal sort of discussions in in the hallway uh, because they're complex issues, and it's it's good to to get all the sort of nuances uh, from people when discussing it. Uh, I'm also happy with the way it, it develops. Um, I'm, I feel confident in. in um, I feel cautiously optimistic, I guess, uh, about the, the CCWG reaching um, uh, its, its final sort of goal in January, and that uh, we're still on time for the, um, uh, the transition to, to be completed um, by September 2016. Um, so I just wanted to address that too and, and hear if there were any other comments as well on that. Thanks. Nirani. So um, let's see if there are any um, questions, um, especially for the for those who are not in Dublin. Um, if not, uh, let's move on. And um, well, just um, since we're um, discussing about the CCWG timeline, um, it is actually they have the material available on. Um, and it's published where it shows the rough timelines on where the CCWG is ready by when. And um, so um, I can share it um, on the Chris team list um, after this call so that we, we actually have a rough idea about the, um, the timeline and more um, visual image. So um, let's then go to the status update and implementation. So first on the SLA. So, as you know, the third version of the SLA is published. Um, so, that, this has um, incorporated the community feedback on, on, on the second version. And this is actually um, making it public that ICANN is now welcome to make a comment on this, given that um, this has incorporated um, the feedback from the numbers community. But as you've seen on the on the global list, that um, there was a question asked whether the Chris team will be reviewing it. Um, and I think um, Paul Wilson, I suppose he's uh, with the RIR CEO, fact that um, yes, it would indeed be useful uh, to share the Chris team analysis um, to see if this third version still is consistent with. Um, the number community proposal. So, um, so that's where we are now. And um, I wonder if uh, Michael can first give us a brief overview of the major changes from the last um, version. And um, let's uh, discuss on how we can work and just uh, share 
a brief analysis is um, from those who have already read this um, third version. Uh, so I see a question from Nurani. Is the SLA published on the website? Uh, you mean the NL website? I believe so, yeah. I, I saw it on the so um, maybe I can post it on the um, on the chat. And in the meantime, uh, would Michael be able to give us an overview of the major changes? This is Amy, thank you. Um, so just wanted to uh, let you all know and um, about well, update on where we are with the new SLA. So this draft SLA, uh, the third version, uh, incorporates both kind of feedback from the community as well as um, feedback that we got from ICANN publicly. Um, and also we had a, uh, a meeting in Dublin with uh, ICANN operational staff, essentially with the leaks on uh, some of the operational pieces of the SLA. So this is not the um, the legal uh, feedback or anything like that or, or anything more than just the operational pieces for the SLA comments from ICANN. So in the track changes version, and um, you'll see that I think on the NRO website we provided both a clear, um, clean copy as well as a track changes copy against uh, draft version 2. And there's also a matrix that explains the comments of why certain changes were made and uh, in response to also some of the comments that we received from the community. So in the track changes version, you know, you'll, you'll notice some cleanup stuff, whether it's uh, just logistical or um, kind of you know, grammatical stuff or maybe links that were updated and things along that nature. Um, to go through just a couple of ones I want to point out. Um, you know, there is a part in the background version uh, or the background section, uh, part G, where we had deleted the parentheticals there, and um, this was just something that was brought up to make sure that we are we are consistent with the ASO MOU. So, um, and we we figured it wasn't anything that was uh, too material to take that stuff out. Um, you'll see some things with regard to the proper spelling of principle, you know, uh, specifying it's unicast IPv4 and IPv6. But um, to the more substantive stuff that might be of interest to everybody, um, you'll see in Article 2.1, we went from the operator is required to shall use its best efforts to coordinate with the operators of the other IANA services. And this seemed a reasonable change in the sense that um, this would require the operator to use its best efforts, but you know, coordination is a two-way street, and um, you know it's kind of hard if, let's say, the other operators, if we ended up going to a split operator system, that if they didn't cooperate, um, you know, we wanted to make sure that it was very clear. So, our our interest is that they would be cooperative in any in any sort of um, manner that they could, but we can't require them to then make sure that the other side coordinates with them. So, those are one of the reasons why we went in there. Um, the 2.3 part was uh, essentially a clarification that we wanted to make sure that the staff was not part of the policy development that um, you know we were separating those two and I think that was one of the SLA principles if I if I recall correctly um, but making sure that staff could communicate but there was no advancement or initiation of any type of policy development um, if you go further down uh, again there's just some some clarification ones, nothing that really is, is terribly different, I don't think. Um, there's some, okay, let's see here. So in the operational requirements 4.3D, um, there was just a clarification there about, you know, how many business days upon receipt of initial request, and this is really just to kind of clarify how things would be processed. Um, so registry data. Uh, a big thing about here, and you'll see that we put in there a copy of all information about open requests and request in progress in a non-proprietary format. You'll see non-proprietary format throughout there. Um, the reason we brought that up was that our main concern is obviously the information um, and the registry data. And we're not so much concerned in terms of any kind of proprietary software that an operator may um, create or use and delivery of the services. However, if there ever came a time that we wanted to, um, to either make sure we have backup copies of the data, which would be you know something that's very reasonable and, and probably appropriate, or in the in instance that we may have to move to another operator, we want to make sure we have the data 
in a format that is readily re readable, that you wouldn't be beholden to a particular operator's, let's say, software and having to get a license from them. We just wanted to make sure that the data was available in a non-proprietary format, and that is um, that is the reason for that that change there. Um, you know, we have we have some. It looks like there's a lot of red lines, but the obligation to issue reports. It was really some of it was moving it around, um, so it was just being more clear in terms of the types of reports that that we need and and the types of um, things that we expect from the operator. And then uh, you know we have the periodic review, which is you know kind of one of the things that we wanted to make sure we had the ability to do so. And then uh, let me try to hear what else might be of um, interest. You know, the continuity of operations, that was another thing that um, we just wanted to make sure we had a process in place, but something that um, that the operator could could commit to in the sense of how we would have a transition, making sure that there is, you know, appropriate preparations in place in the event that um, there would be another successor operator. One of the items that was brought up, though, is that, you know, we may have preliminary things and more general things ready to go. However, sometimes the, the details of a plan may not be readily ascertainable if you don't know who the successor operator is. So that's where some of those edits were meant to kind of um, reflect, is that we do have uh, an obligation by the operator to be part of a, an orderly transition, that there are things that need to be done in preparation for that, but that um, you know some of the stuff does come once we've actually identified a successor operator. Um, the intellectual property, which I know some of us, um, you know, have noticed there's a lot of conversation about. Um, you know, this this was all about what I just talked about in terms of non-proprietary format. That, uh, you know, from the RAR perspective and from the community perspective, I don't think we're necessarily worried about, um, you know, particular proprietary works or intellectual property that may be created by a particular operator in the delivery of the services, so long as any data, which is really the, the crux of what we need, the, the registry data, is provided in a non-proprietary format. So um, that was just a clarification there. And then the rest of it, um, you know, is pretty much stayed the same. So if anybody has any questions in particular, I know I kind of um, kind of breezed over some of that stuff, but uh, I thought those were probably the ones that the, the group might be interested in getting an update on. And obviously, we have them in a red line format, so you can see what the changes are ver compared to version 2. And we also have the matrix um, that addresses the comments that were made publicly. So, And just to give a status right now, um, this version, we've, we've put it out there, and it's, um, it's open for the community to take a look at, to keep it transparent. Um, you know, we don't have any kind of set public comment period because this actually isn't an additional comment period. Um, this is more keeping in transparency and accountability so everybody knows the status of where we are. And then right now we are waiting for ICANN's uh, comments, uh, which I believe they'll be making publicly, and then everybody can keep an eye on the process there. So I know that um, you know, the Chris team is going to be taking a look at it to make sure that it's consistent with the principles. I would also keep in mind that this isn't the final draft because we're still awaiting comments from ICANN. And then once we receive those comments, um, there will likely, unless they just say this is all good, which I'm sure that'll actually happen. But if they, uh, it'd be great if they did. But um, if they come back and they have some comments, we will likely have another version of this, and then um, hopefully that'll be the final, or at least close to final. And I think that's probably the one that's really important. Um, I think the final version is really what's most important in terms of the Chris team, um, you know, I guess making a statement whether it's consistent or not with the SLA principles. So, um, but otherwise, if anybody has any questions, it'd be great to take any. Michael. I see a comment that says very comprehensive update. Uh, thank you, Michael, indeed. And it's uh, very helpful that we have clarified um, the status of this uh, this SLA um, being published. It's actually not public comment open to the community because we've already done that. And this is more for the transparency um, and um, in showing the status um, and welcoming feedback from ICANN. So I, I suppose from the Christine point of view, um, we just want to give assurance to um, 
all the parties involved that we actually think that the current version of version 3 is consistent with the number of community proposals so that they can actually, you know, um, be confident that this version is um, is representing the community needs and will be based on that. And I guess, like, uh, similar to how this is sharing transparency, uh, it, might, it would be a good way to demonstrate to the wider community that, you know, um, the Chris team has actually taken a look and we, we believe that this is um, uh, consistent with the proposal. So, um, as a way forward, um, maybe it would be good to um, to do like a comparison check like we did for the previous um, SLA version 2 on whether there, um, there are any changes that, um, that actually affected the proposal to be not consistent with the number of community proposal, which I didn't uh, observe any from a quick look. But to, I, I think it would be good to, rather than just saying, yep, we actually think this is consistent, it might be good to, you know, um, say yes for each of the sections that uh, we have actually done the review in the past. Um, and I think um, for the previous version, we actually um, had volunteers to work on this. But since it's just the changes in the previous version, and Michael has already explained the whole part, um, maybe we can just um, yeah comment on this um, on the draft. Welcome comments from the Christy members in general without asking for a particular person to work on it. And then um, after a fixed comment period, um, if there are no comments that observe inconsistencies, we can actually share on the global list that we see this um, third version as consistent. Uh, with the Christian proposal. Um, maybe we'd give it a week um, for the Chris team to give comments, and if no comments beyond that, we can actually announce on the global list that um, the Chris team sees this uh, version is consistent. Oh, sorry, Nirani, did you have a question? Sorry, no, um, I think you actually covered it all already. I just wanted to, to um, like you said, you clarify that um, uh, that it's not a call for, for public comments, that it's um, that we're asking ARCAN to publicly comment. And I wanted to add as well that we brought this up as well in the meeting with the board that um, we expect, we reiterated uh, our expectation that the, the ICANN board would submit their comments publicly, and uh, I believe we got a confirmation of that. So that is something very, that I see something very positive. And then I agree with your, your way forward as well. Um, that's fine. I think yeah, it's good for us to, to um, um, ensure that there haven't, that there has been no changes crept in that um, are inconsistent with the proposal. And then maybe just also for, um, in, just for for completeness sake, just have walk that each of us just read through the comments that uh, were incorporated um, uh, in the matrix and make sure that they're that they are all addressed um, in the version three. Thanks. Thanks, Norani. And I see a um, comment from John whether. Michael could share his observation on any conflicts with the number of community principles or anything that um, he'd like to highlight. Um, it might be a little bit uh, difficult to do this with Michael's position, but um, yeah, uh, if you have anything else to add in addition to what you've shared, Michael, um, yeah, feel free to um, comment. Yes, thank you, Zubi. Um, so. Just to, to let you all know, as we were going through this process of um, you know, revising the, the draft SLA, and actually even from the first version to the second, now the second to the third, and even as we move into the, um, the next version uh, after we receive uh, comments from ICANN, I know that our one of our main focus uh, points is that 
we look at the SLA principles from the CRISP proposal and um, it, it actually drives a lot of our thought process in the sense of whether a change is appropriate. Um, you know, it, it must be, in our minds, consistent with the SLA principles in the CRISP proposal. And if there were ever any potential conflict or, or anything that actually did conflict with those principles, um, it would have to be something very, very, very serious and that we would, we would bring up very clearly to um, the community because from our standpoint, the, um, you know, the CRISP proposal reflects the feedback from the global community in terms of numbering services and that, um, you know, that was a lot of work that we did, uh, hard to think, almost a year ago. And, um, you know, it, it, it was essentially reflective of what the community wants. And so with us, with us doing so, we really have an eye towards making sure that it's consistent with the principles. And, um, you know, that's, that's probably the, the most important thing, or at least one of the most important things in terms of, you know, putting my, um, RIR hat on versus Chris team member, um, hat that we are making sure that it is uh, consistent with SLA principles because that's what the community has instructed us um, to do so. Now, if there ever were something that were to come up that it looked like there would be some conflict that then a change would be needed, um, you know, you can rest assured that we would make sure that it is brought up and we would essentially have to, I mean, this is one of the things that, um, you know, very rare occurrence that possibly a very remote chance that this could happen, but that if there was some sort of need for a change in the proposal, I don't think um, that would be anything taken very lightly. So we really do focus on making sure that, uh, that um, you know, the SLA principles are upheld and, and reflective in the SLA that's drafted. Thank you very much, Michael. I think it's uh, really reassuring to hear this, um, uh, you know, directly with your words. We, of course, you know, trust you and other RIR legal team to do this, but I think it's, it's really helpful that you have actually, you know, clearly um, explained the spirit. And uh, um, thanks so much for, for your work, not just making sure the language is there, but then constantly keep in mind about this. So, Principle. So thank you. Um, and I actually had a you know very quick look at the SLA um, third version myself, and I think I also feel that you know all the changes made are consistent with um, the proposal, and basically it's either for better clarification or more um, um, changing the ways of the operational part that seems to work. Uh, you know, mutually better for the RARs and the IN operation team, and, and so yeah. But then, yeah, let's uh, review it. Um, each of us review it and uh, share our comments. Just to, and I think the more of us uh, that we actually say that this is consistent, it gives some more credibility to our endorsement. So uh, I encourage you to you all to take a look. So yep. Um, then let's go to the review committee. So if I understand, the latest status is that um, we've had a public comment for the first version of the review committee. Um, I didn't observe anything controversial um, from the public comments, but um, RIRs are working on the, the updated review committee charter. And also I believe that um, um, each of the RARs are in parallel um, preparing to make a public call for um, selection of the review committee members within the respective regions. So, um, so I think we know the stages of the right region, which was updated the last time. Uh, but if there's any uh, any changes from this, uh, welcome to hear. And then I'd be interested to hear the stages in other regions as well. So first, um, before we go to the selection of the representatives in each region, uh, would uh, someone from the RIR be able to give us an update on the review committee charter? Well, I think uh, from, from the first team, I mean, and I think um, we have Ernest and Michael from the RIR who is in the first team.
If um, no, um, nothing notable in terms of the update, I suppose we'll just um, wait to hear from um, the RARs about um, the second version of the review committee charter. Um, and um, yeah, let's see if there's any update about the selection of the members from any of the regions. So, um, in terms of the APNIC region, I just know that um, this is under preparation by um, the APNIC EC, but um, I, um, but there hasn't been anything more public than this. But this is actually acknowledged and under preparation. Um, could someone mute? I see. I hear some typing sound. So, um, if no hands, no further update, um, we'll see that the current state is as it is. No further update on the charter and all the selection. And I think as we um, move towards the end of the year and getting close to the submission of the proposal, it would be nice to have more clarity on the status of review committee member selection from each of the RIR. So um, it would be good if um, we can each follow up within our region on the status of the selection. Ernest? Yeah, yeah, sorry. I had a little bit of an issue with my audio. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, on, on our side, we are yet to go into the process of, uh, of uh, selecting the review committee members. And we'll probably be doing this at, uh, uh, at our next meeting, which is going to happen in about uh, three weeks. So after that, we'll probably have an update for you. Excellent. Thank you, Anis. Um I see hand from Michael. Yes, Zumi, just wanted to update you on the, um, the selection process side of the review committee from the Aaron region. I know that it's under discussion right now. We haven't um, established how that would um, – would actually play out yet, but um, but it is under discussion, so it is on the radar here in the Aaron region. And then um, just wanted to make a brief comment with regard to the uh, review committee charter. Um, you know, I think that it's in the final stages of uh, getting ready to um, to post and announce a um, a final version that will have red lines and and uh, a matrix with with uh, replies to comments similar to the SLA. I know that the um, you know the RRA legal team was, had worked on on that, and um, you know I think we're working to to get that out. And so um, it's not it's not quite ready yet, but I think it it's in the final stages of that. So just wanted to give that quick, quick update. Okay, that's really good to hear both the situation in Erin and that we're almost ready with the updated version of the review committee charter from the running. Thank you. I thought I'll, I'll give a quick update from the RIPE region. Uh, there's been a suggestion from the RIPE chair to uh, initially uh, compose the review team uh, with the um, from with members from the NRONC um, as a um, as a way of of um, getting the review team in in um, in place relatively quickly. Uh, and then, of course, have a follow-up process of, of uh, renewal of uh, the review committee. Um, this has been brought up on the list, and the, the, it has received some positive support in the right community. Uh, and we have a right meeting coming up in two weeks' time, I think, or is it one week? Um, and uh, it will be discussed at the right meeting there as well. So um, if there's agreement in the community, that will be brought back, I presume, to the um, global list. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for this update, Melanie. And um, so then let's go to um, IPR. So um, as you know, we've basically agreed on what to put into the proposal, and now we want to start considering um, how we want to move forward in implementation. 
So there's still work to do on um, what we've actually already shared, the, uh, the principles, the IPR principles that we have developed uh, with the, both the IEGS and the CWG for the names. So they're aware that um, we have developed this. And um, at the doubling meeting, we also mentioned that um, the numbers community support the framework that has um, been shared on the INF plan to base it on the contract. And um, so that's where we are now. Also, um, the three the leaders of the three operational communities, so um, Nurani, myself, um, Alan and Paul from the ICG, and then <clears throat> the leaders from the um, IETF and um, the names joined the, the meeting, um, and we discussed a way forward um, about this uh, IPR. Um, it was uh, very introductory, um, having ICANN staff joining, and um, I think it was just basically to to consider a way forward. And one of the ideas that was mentioned there was perhaps on the IPR issue, um, we may uh, come up with a, a small team from each of the operational communities um, so that we can jointly discuss this issue and agree on a framework. Um, and, and then um, further, once we agree on a framework, we, we will have the lawyers to do the um, you know, um, the implementation from the legal perspective. But this is just very, very pre preliminary. It was just brainstorming and no decision was made. So um, that's where the dialogue stopped and it's just an update of what we actually shared and brain brainstormed at the meeting. Um, as the next step, we're still waiting for um, further um, update and status from the CWG because um, from both the protocols and the numbers, we, we actually did further work and then uh, presented what we've done. So, um, and I think they're having a meeting this week, so we would be expecting further update around this issue. Um, and um, we were initially planning to have the next uh, meeting among the leaders and ICANN staff this week, but um, uh, we thought that we haven't really seen much to update in terms of the progress. So we are going to continue discussions online, and then I'm sure we'll be um, arranging another call in um, sometime within this uh, month. So that's where we are, and um, I think as the first step, we need to agree on how specifically we work on on, on this among the three operational communities um, about the IPR issue, and then it would be good to have a rough timeline on what phase to be completed at uh, what stage. So I see hand from Andre. Thank you, Zumi. Uh, well, I think you partly answered my question. Uh, my question was, um, so with regards to IPR, what is your sense? Is it a general agreement on the principles and the framework? and we just need to sort out the detail and the timeline, or there are some issues that are standing in the way of this agreement, and if there are, it would be interesting, I think, for the whole team to know what the issues are so we can work on them. I guess what you said, that we will get more clarity after this uh, CWG call. Uh, is my understanding correct? I believe so. Okay, I, I think it would be very interesting to uh, share the outcomes of this call somehow, update the Chris team uh, so we get more clarity if we're in general agreement with regards to framework and principles or there are some outstanding items that we need to discuss. Yes, totally agree and thank you for the suggestion. And um, as I mentioned, there's, um, there's not been update from the CWG about this status of discussion. So. At this point, there's nothing uh, controversial to be discussed because there's no input from the CWG, but we'll certainly um, share and raise with the Chris team if we observe anything. And as I said, uh, we're not in a, dis in a position to make decisions uh, on behalf of the community. And another thing I want to say is that um, the Chris team position is more on, on ensuring that 
uh, the framework that we'll come up with will be consistent with the number community proposal. So I think as we actually progress and move more towards the details of the implementation, the RIRs will be taking a lead on this. So uh, I, I trust that either Paul, Alan, or uh, I don't know, somebody else that they delegate will be actually um, involved. Uh, I see hand from Milani. Thanks, Ajiri. Um No, I just wanted also to confirm that we've, we haven't had any discussions with the other chairs about what the sense in their community is or, or if there is anything controversial. Uh, they acknowledge that they read both the IANA plan, um, I've forgotten what they called it, but um, um, the, uh, well, the IETF uh, sort of view on the IPRs and that they've read our minimal requirements. Uh, and it's been posted in the CWG list, but we have no sense of if if um, if, if the CWG in general will say, okay, this is fine, we'll go ahead with this, or if there are any other um, yeah, outstanding issues or any anything that they're not happy with there. So I guess we just have to wait and see, but we don't have any sort of additional information there. And then I just wanted to say um, another thing about the implementation part, which is even touched upon, um, that we are also, as we're looking forward uh, towards the implementation of, of, of the proposal, uh, from our side, Izumi's and, and my side, uh, we've been very clear about that there, there's a separation between the role of the CRISP team or, and the representatives of the CRISP team and the RIR. So we have no intention to go in and, and um, micromanage any implementation steps. The, uh, the only role we would have uh, in in um, in this would would be sort of of an auditing role to make sure that no no implementation steps that are taken go against the, the the wishes of the community, so to speak. So that's also something we we think is important to be clear about. Um, the details of the implementation should really lie with with the RIRs and should be they are the ones who should be driving that process. Indeed, Andre, um, based on your comment on the chat, it's uh, similar to our approach regarding the SLA. But, uh, so we won't actually define the implementation ourselves, but then, you know, share our observation whether a certain direction is consistent with the proposal or not. Yep. So good to see that uh, we're clear about this and in agreement. Um, so, well, um, the next point of the agenda is timelines. I think the core part has been covered. That, um, um, we, well, first of all, the ICG has already completed um, the proposal um, and it's been announced. We're still waiting for the CCWG to be ready, which they expect it to be ready at the end of January. And NTIA has uh, um, expressed that this, this um, they can still accommodate this uh, time of the submission, but they actually want to make sure that they want the submission by the ICG and the, uh, the ICG proposal and the CCWG proposal submitted to them at the same time, not separately. So that's something that's um, being made clear. And then beyond that, I think it's um, it's. Well, the phase is not different. That you know gets reviewed by the NTIA, and then they'll coordinate with other departments um, within the U.S. government, and then it will go to the Congress for the review. Uh, and once um, this um, fixed period, 30 days, the uh, fixed period is passed, then um, and there are no objections, then um, I think the proposal would be we can start considering um, the implementation of the proposal. Having said that, in parallel, I think, um, as I said, I can um, implementation team has already started paying attention and getting prepared and what they can do at this stage. They, of course, can't actually start the actual implementation, but then they can start the planning so that um, they can actually uh, shorten the time of the implementation as much as possible. And what I'm hearing is that um, they would need roughly about four months in preparing implementation and with the um, impact on the CCWG proposal, 
on submission being delayed. I think the implementation time are like shortened a little bit to like three and a half months, but um, they see that um, they can they are likely to um, be able to accommodate uh, accommodate it. So yeah, I guess we're still okay on the overall um, timeline. Um, and um, let's see if there's any questions about the timelines um, or anything we, we can do from the non community perspective. If no hand, um, let's go to the last point on the agenda, which is to prepare for the IG. F session. So there are two sessions that cover the topic of the INL stewardship transition. Both are workshops. Uh, one is a workshop that is, that is being um, coordinated by Milton Miller, and that's the purpose of this uh, workshop is to um, have an opportunity for um, wider consensus from the um, communities outside, but from from outside the communities where we have intentionally discussed this issue, so i.e. the three operational communities, the ICG. So I don't think um, the session plans to have like a formal consensus call or such, but then to raise um, awareness about what the proposal is about, what the objective is, what the essence is, and so the people who have not necessarily regularly participated in the process um, uh, understand and then feel comfortable enough to support it. So that's the idea behind the session. So um, I'll I'll be on it uh, as um, from the Chris team, and I think I'll be basically sharing the core points about the Chris team proposal and um, how we have actually come up with the uh, consensus within the number community, plus our observation about the ICG proposal. That we are basically comfortable, um, and we don't see any conflict. So those will be the, the essence of what I'm planning to cover. Um, and the second workshop that covers the INS transition is uh, this is um, coordinated by uh, Nigel Hickson, and it focuses on the process. So how this uh, process, the multi-stakeholder based process, um, have worked in these. Um, and coming up with a proposal, what are the challenges that have been observed and how we have addressed it, and how we have actually evaluated um, um, when making changes from the initial proposal, and in, uh, how this can be applied to the wide, wider um, internet governance issues. So again, for this, uh, I'm planning to um, Share the process that we we went through and um, and how we have actually collaborated, not not just among the numbers community between the five regions, but then how we have actually coordinated uh, with the other operational communities, especially on the IPR, and then managed to come up with um, with consensus um, and. Um, and I think the core message that I want to bring is that I think the fact that we have actually come up with a product, a concrete proposal that both that represents the global member resources community um, that has been agreed by the five regions, and also the fact that ICG has already delivered a proposal that reflects consensus. Um, not just in the three operational communities, but then uh, based on the public comment from anyone else who's, who has been watching and interested in this issue shows that this, um, this multi-stakeholder um, process, the model work, in addressing a, a specific issue that the community was tasked with. So that would be, the, I guess, the core message that I would like to deliver in this uh, second session. So um, that's an overview, and I'll, I'll share the links of the session. And if you um, see any point that you think is especially important to highlight at the session, um, both the session, uh, your feedback is welcome. And um, so, so 
your feedback is welcome now or um, online as well. So I've just uh, pasted a link to the first session and then I'm pasting to another one. So it might be like you might need time to like take a look at the overview of the session and then to think a little bit more about what we want to add. Um, so I'm not seeing any hand at the moment, um, but um, your comments are certainly continue to be welcome. And the first session will be on Thursday, so I. I can um, incorporate any comments that I receive from the team until um, close of business Wednesday, um, Joel Pessoa time, which is UTC minus three. So I think we've pretty much covered the agenda for this meeting. Um, let's see if, this, if anybody wants to make any comments or on anything in general. If not, I think we're done with the call. Um, and thank you very much for joining. And uh, the next call will uh, go back to the regular schedule uh, in December. I'm quite bad at um, uh, sharing the correct time. So, Haman, would you be able to confirm um, when the next call is under the regular schedule in December? Um, I, I'm not hearing from um, her man or anybody from the, um, yes, indeed, um, Andrea, I think it would be useful to have a, a calendar invite. Um, so it would be helpful if um, her man or anybody from the NRO Secretariat can uh, help us do that. And um, I've also requested um, whether the next schedule at the call can be posted on the schedule for the team call so that the, um, the date of the next call will be clear. So um, November 25th is in um, Andrew's calendar. Okay. Um, well, followed by December 10th. Well, I think it would be the best to confirm um, online, I suppose, um, given that we are not hearing from anybody, anybody from the NR Secretariat. So let's confirm this request for the calendar invite and then also update on the Christine website. So thank you very much and talk to you uh, again at the next call. Yes, thank you, Zumi, and have a nice uh, day.